And welcome to Chain Reaction. I'm Sharon Horgan, and tonight I'm going to be talking to Dennis Kelly, playwright, writer, and writer. <laughs> um, hi, Dennis Kelly. Uh, hello, Sharon Horgan. Thanks I'm for... Dennis Kelly. I'm going to be talking to Sharon Horgan, <laughs> uh, actress, writer, yeah, director, hand model. Hand model <laughs> and holder of pieces of paper with questions on for me. Uh, I'm going to get into it. So Dennis and I are actually friends, so um, one of the reasons why this is great is because we haven't seen each other for a little while, I'm just going to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also because I'm a, um, a genuine, massive fan of your work. Thank you. And um, when we, we met... <laughs> I say it all the time. 20 but... years I've had to wait for that. 20 <laughs> years. 20 when, years. When we did um, Pulling Together <laughs> and we were lucky enough to get a comedy award and Dennis didn't turn up because... As I said at the time, he's an unsociable weirdo. When I was collecting the award, I said, um, this is for Dennis Kelly, who is one of our, I think, greatest, I might have said, um, <laughs> one of the greatest writers working in um, theatre, TV and film. And I called it. I called it before anyone. I what? mean, you were, who you were mean? you then? I mean, I, I got was, it right. No. Oh, and now you've, you've fulfilled uh, my prophecy that night on the stage when everyone was like scratching their chins going, what is she talking about? I love that you turned that into a prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, first question is, why are you always off collaborating with other people? Like, what's that all about? <laughs> Tim Minchin, Ken MacDonald, bloody Jeremy Irons. What happened to us? <laughs> Um, <laughs> what did happen to us? That was so nice. We were so we were nice in it was those fun, days. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was a laugh. It was a laugh. I have to say, pulling was like it was just the best. It was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Because basically, we would sit in a room for six months and we would just sort of come up with the worst, dirtiest jokes. Um, do you remember how we met? We met like we we were we were uh, in a youth theatre we together, theater, the Lost Youth Theatre. Uh huh. And I was, it was the seagull, we were check doing a production the seagull. Of the seagull. It was I was for... Constantine, I was marvellous. <laughs> and you were Nina. Yeah. You were wonderful, darling. Yes. Yeah. But, um, but we didn't know each other We didn't really then. know each other, but then we um, bumped into each other in a pub yeah. in Camden. We were both equally pissed. And you uh, told me that you'd um, started writing and I yeah. found that so um, exciting and then I, it kind of changed everything. Yeah, it, you, well, I gave you the play and you liked it and we put it on together. Yeah. And that, if I hadn't met you in that pub, I wouldn't be a writer. That's not there's, no, 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 it's absolutely true because there's no way I would have carried it on because I didn't have that drive. But you, when I told you the play, you really kind of, you, you got into all that, you produced it and you I were in it and you were like, it was amazing. Play. It, it, and it looked like a play. and It smelled like a play. It smelled like a play. It kind of wasn't a play. But then he just kind of handed me this play and then you went off and travelled around the world for a year. If and I then hadn't we, met we you. we fell in love. Then we fell in love, <laughs> but uh, then fell out of love. Yeah. And I haven't spoken to each other since. Never been the same. <laughs> Um, your first play, or as you've said yourself, the first play that you will admit to writing, uh, began with a man um, crucifying himself, or at least uh, his son describing the crucifixion yeah, of his father. You know, were you nervous about that, or what did you expect your audience to think? And do you find that it's something you have to think hard about before you write a violent scene? Like, do you think about consequence? Uh, with that one, less so because it's it was all sort of descriptive. Although I mean, I remember we did it in France and uh, uh, we, we uh, a woman fainted. It was in the Avignon first. It's, I don't know why, but like this woman fainted. It was a very hot day, and I remember going up to her afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> and I sort of said, uh, um, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You've, was was that the was that the heat?" And she went, "No, it is your play." <laughs> With the, with the second series of Utopia, that was yeah. such a, a strong um, reaction yeah. from the media. I mean, it was front page on, on the mail. And yeah, though that wasn't to do with violence, that was to do with something else. It was to do with yeah. something else. But yeah. does um, re do reactions like that from media make you tread carefully the second no. time around? No. No, I mean, because I think, like, you know, I think whenever you're writing something, you're, you're not thinking of... I think it's... I, I actually sort of think it's disrespectful to think of the audience, in a way. You know what I mean? How do you mean? Uh, I don't understand. Well, um, I think... 
as an audience, if I go and see something or if I watch something, I don't want someone else thinking about what I think. I know what I think. I want to see what you think, and, uh, and then I'll make my mind up about it, whether I like it or not. You know? So in, you've got to think about the story. You've got to just think about the story and what's right. And then when you look at it and you've finished it and there's all this sort of stuff in it that's a bit scary, then, then you crap your pants and you sort of think, maybe I shouldn't have, maybe I shouldn't have done that. You know, Do you but, think that's why you know, TV can become quite generic because everyone's yeah, worrying yeah, about the I, audience? Yeah, I think the not... worst phrase for any... The, 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 the worst... Um, Four words a writer can hear. I hope there are four now. Uh, the, the, try, try it out, and if there's not, we'll go back. If, if it's not, or I'll add one. Okay. But the worst four words you can hear as a writer is, who is it for? Four words. But because, you know, that, there's, there's a sort of a thing now where, where people are just interested in sort of demographics, and it's like, who are you trying to reach? Who are you trying to do? You know, and, it, and that's not how you make things that are good. You know, you make things that are good by sort of believing in something and just really wanting to tell that story. And if, you, if you don't believe that the, those are real characters and real human beings, mm. why should anyone else believe it? You know mm. what I mean? If you don't believe that's real... So you've got to sort of go with the integrity of it, you know what I mean? I suppose it's... Um a case of how difficult it is to get things on but when you get to your stage you can kind of say well I'm not interested in in that sort of no I don't you know I don't really know though Sharon because I think like really that I reckon you start out like that you know what I mean I think so the best advice I ever got was someone said to me if you compromise now you'll compromise all the way through your career and that really stayed with me because actually you sort of just you decide what you believe in and then you stick with those things if you if you, if you wait till, till a, t- a time when you've got like a bit more power or something or whatever it is you think you're going to get then by that time you'll already have compromised yourself you'll be that kind of person anyway yeah but you've done the same you never you've done well, things no, you believe well, in was, all the time what i was going to say to you is do you not think we just got lucky you know that that somehow yeah. it sort of fell in our laps a bit yeah. and we ended maybe, up maybe maybe making... maybe this is terrible advice to give to any writers but <laughs> i don't mind doing that because then we'll sabotage their careers and they won't yeah. come up and act this competition <laughs> which is what this is really about surely <laughs> yeah <laughs> Actually, that's another question for later. I've got one off the back <laughs> of that. Sabotaging people's careers. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, I wanted to ask you about getting sober. Do you mind if I ask you about that? No, no, that's all right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, Out me on live radio. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you said you said it was fine. I could talk about anything except... Yeah, yeah, don't talk about... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I just wondered how... Um, how did becoming sober change the way you wrote? And I know it was a long time ago and before you had sort of any major success, so that, that's probably the answer in itself. But I know you were writing back then because I was writing with you before you, you got sober. But how much did it change the way you saw yourself and your um, possibilities and the, and the way you looked at the world? Well, uh, complete, uh, like 100%, to- totally. Like it's sort of... Um, I mean, I haven't had a drink in about 13 years, and, and it, but, by the, but actually, at the end of it, I was a bit of a... I was probably a bit of a mess, you know. I was probably drinking about the... I, I worked it out once. I used to mix my drinks so I couldn't... So yeah, I, I could say to myself, I've only, I've, only had a, I've only had a bottle of wine, you know. <laughs> Meanwhile, I've had like a half bottle of whiskey and a couple of... But I worked it out once. It's about like the equivalent of a bottle of spirits a day, and oh, that's no. like at the age of about 30, you know. It, yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't good, and it was like... You, you sort of have to try... You have to confront a lot of stuff about yourself. You, you, it requires honesty, and it, it, it don't work without it, you know what I mean? And it, it doesn't require honesty. It requires the attempt at honesty, you know what I mean? So you have to, you have to face what you've done and, and sort of say it was your fault, you know. You have to wait for other people to adjust as well, don't you? Because, I mean, just from a completely selfish perspective, I, I lost a really good drinking You partner. did, I know, I know, and I feel, I feel bad. Not only that, I took that drinking partner away from you because we used to get rat-assed, you know. But I think we had some good times we getting drunk. We had some great times. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for that. Thanks for telling me. But, 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 no, but it took Is a while. Is there any whiskey in the house? <laughs> it took, um, it took a, a while just for us yeah. to get back on a normal... Yeah, it um, does. It does. Even and do you know what? I mean, you're, I, I've, I've probably got about two or three friends from that time. Like, I, 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 my, a lot of my friends have changed because I've changed, you know what I mean? And not many... I, you don't... You, you, you do lose friends, you know what I mean? But, but I'm the best. I mean, you said two or three. But... You're, you've always been there. You've always been there. Yeah, the, the others I don't like. Yeah. I actively try and get rid of. that's what you say to me I, in private. Yeah, yeah. So you left school, I don't know if many people know this, but you left school at 16, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was your plan? Or, or, did you, <laughs> <laughs> or did you have one at all? I had no plan whatsoever. I, had, I, I, had, I was an idiot. I had no <laughs> idea how the world worked. I mean, I, I genuinely think that I, 
you know, I look at myself and I was so unbelievably naive. I mean, I, I didn't know anything, you know. I, I didn't know what garlic was, you know. I kind of, <laughs> I, 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 I realised this. No, no, it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm even but being... But Dennis, you like, were stacking you know, shells at Sainsbury's. Yeah, the, not the garlic shells. <laughs> and, uh, I didn't know, like, I didn't know what a... Uh, I, I was in my 20s before I actually understood that a BA was a degree. I've got a degree now, by the way. Yeah. But, uh, like, uh, for example, peaches. Like, I thought, my, when we, used, we used to have peaches for, for, like, dessert, like tin peaches, like, you know, in a tin. Yeah. And, my, and, we, and I thought they were called peaches. <laughs> and it wasn't until I was about 25 and I saw a peach. I knew what a peach was. I didn't know what a peach was. It wasn't until I was about 25 that I put them together. I thought, oh, peaches? That's what comes in the tin. <laughs> I thought it was a different fruit. I thought it was a completely... So I, I was just, like, amazingly naive. And oh. I knew nothing about the world. I don't know why, but for some reason, I, I didn't really know anything about the world. And I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I left school. I was really rubbish at school. I was, like, just terrible. I, I, I just I had no qualifications. And uh, I left school, had no idea what I wanted to do. And... That's so nuts to me, because, <clears throat> honestly, you are one of the smartest people I've ever met. And I know you don't wear it on the sleeve. Like, most people wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think part of it it might be like the back it might be our background like my family weren't really you know my dad was uh, worked on the buses my mum's a cleaner and they weren't really like um they they come from really really poor uh backgrounds in Ireland mm -hmm. uh, I mean when my mum talks about a background it is like Angela's ashes mm -hmm. I mean, it's unbelievable mm -hmm. you know so like they when they came here that was like an, a pretty amazing thing they got mm -hmm. a council house and they had jobs and so they didn't really think that the ne you know about um, other things, and but so we didn't go up thinking like that. How did that suddenly change? I mean, I, I guess it, it was gradual, but I mean that's an enormous. Yeah, I think I, I bumbled from one stupid situation to another, and uh, like got to a point when I was about thirty years old where I thought, oh God, I'm going, I've oh, got to do something. But your brain must have been. Go I mean, you must have realised that you were having. Yeah, but I was fortunately were... there was this fantastic uh, chemical called alcohol, which was <laughs> subduing all of the. Uh, <laughs> doing all of the things in me that might have been uh -huh. fun stuff. Um, did not having a formal education, um, because I know you went back as a mature student, but you're yeah. already writing. Do you feel like it's, um, you know, do you, do you think like not having formal education can give a, a kind of purity to your work? Like no one's told you what to think. For example, you know, these are your mm -hmm. ideas and no one's sort of told you I mean, not specifically talking about um, learning how to be a writer, like cr cr creative writing courses, but, you know, just being told even in, I guess, in university, you're being told a specific way to think and what you should be thinking. Well, and I think, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, I think, uh, I, I, I think, educate, for, for me, education was the, one of the best things I ever did, like going, because I went to Goldsmiths, I was about 30 years old. And by that stage, I'd done jobs. And for me, like, just the fact that I didn't have to get up in the morning was brilliant. And then the next, the, the next thing, that was a bonus, you know, that was good. And then the next thing is I get to talk about things that I like, you know mm. what I mean? And, and, you know, that, all that was amazing, you know. But I, I was ready for education then. I was ready for mm. it. The stuff that I learned, I will never use ever in my life. Right. If anyone ever wants to talk about 16th century Japanese theatre, I'm there. I'm there, you know. <laughs> I've got a background. I've got knowledge. Other than that, I've never used it. But, uh -huh. it, it, but it, what it did was it changed something in my thinking. I think that is good, you know. Right. What I don't, I don't agree with is things like writing courses. In general, I don't, I don't think... I think they just teach you stuff that you're going to learn, you know. Mm. Education is, is amazing, though. I think education is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's all right. Do you, you got educated. You got, yeah, but you I got did the degree, same thing as you. I mean, I didn't drop out. I, um, you know, I got my um, beauty school diploma. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I got to the end of school. <laughs> and then I, I went to... And you went to art school. I went to art school and then, and then, then to, I, and I dropped out of that. Yeah. And then eventually, as a mature student... Um, I think probably like you, I didn't want to work anymore. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. This shop is boring me. I guess it did feel like, um, you know, a, a massive privilege. And it was, yeah. it was, because you're sitting around reading books all day. Yeah, you're more up for it, I think. Yeah, for sure. Um, do you get writers groupies? <laughs> <laughs> no. And this upsets me. Because um, <laughs> actors, actors... If you're an actor, right, <laughs> and I, I know this because when I started out, I started out doing a little bit of acting. Well, we, was, we, we, we met very, We were as doing actors. an acting as a youth group. Uh -huh. And I was a very bad actor, but no. I was still... I, I no. think I was take probably... That back. Take I, back. All right, take that back. I was a pretty bad actor. I, I was a, I'm not sure you were. Um, Dennis, I don't know if any of you saw Pulling, but in the 
first series of Pulling. I did uh, a cameo. Dennis had a cameo role as a dogger. The reason why we got Dennis to do it is we couldn't find any actor who had the right level of malevolence and, <laughs> and general and filthiness. Nastiness. Yeah. That, that doesn't make and you a great <laughs> actor, though, Sharon. That makes you a pervert. That makes you. That is a different thing from. Uh-huh. That's not going to, you know. Uh-huh. But anyway, like, I, I, I sort of. Like that, that, that sort of. The, the acting thing, I think. Actors get groupies. The moment you step off stage, some people look at you and think. What? Even if even if they don't, you know, but you don't. They, no, people don't generally look at me and think that. But whenever really? I stepped off really? stage, I know it's incredible. But to you've think got that. a hot, you've got a hot wife, and you got her through doing what you do. Yeah, I, I, I like to think we got to know each other, and and she <laughs> saw something in me. But uh, no, generally, I don't think you do as a writer. Really? Or, or you, you, no, not really. I think you uh, do. You, you you must get, but you get hit on all the time. Don't no, you? I don't. Uh, you, she does, doesn't she? You no, I mean? no, I you don't. Do. I've seen. Uh, what are you Shut talking about? Up. I know you. I know you really Shut well. Shut up, Dennis. Oh, come Shut on. up. <laughs> um, well, no, I mean, so you're many right. of my friends, would, you know, they want me to set you set you up. But like, you know, it's just like Such a liar. I've tried. Okay, just give I've them my number. For a fee. Um, <laughs> okay, I, I just wanted to ask you about um, Matilda because. Um, you writing a musical, um, yeah, the, a, a musical that could be watched by children and, and that they wouldn't be <clears throat> irrevocably damaged forever <laughs> is uh, <laughs> such a feat. And, and I was really surprised when you told me back, back, back in the day that um, you were doing yeah. it. Like, how did that happen? And can you even get your head around how phenomenally successful it is? Because I can't. Uh, well, I, I don't know. No, I mean, it's literally the best thing I've ever seen. It's the best, the greatest thing I've ever seen. That's going on the posters now, you know, it, that's like... Going it, it is. I, I, I cried at the end of it. I was so, <clears throat> I was so overwhelmed by how good it was on every level. But how do you know um, good things exist and they don't become worldwide f- phenomenal successes, especially not to you? <laughs> Scumbag. Little old Dennis Kelly. <laughs> yeah, but no. isn't it, has it... Just blown your mind. Well, uh, a, a, bit, a bit, I guess. I mean, I, I, t- I tried to stay away from th- whether things are successful or not. Even when we were doing pulling, for example, I didn't really try and get too involved in that. Part, not, not for any sort of great, not because I'm a great person, but quite the opposite, because I'm a, I'm a dick. And I know <laughs> that, like, if people say I'm great, I will walk around thinking I'm great for a little while, you know, which is, which is bad. And mm. if they say I'm terrible, I'll walk around thinking I'm terrible for a good two or three weeks. Right. Which is, and neither one of those things is it's any good for helpful, your work. No. You know, it's, it's not good for you as a human being, but it's also not good for your work. So mm. I, I do try and stay away from that. Mm. It, it did, with, with Matilda, that got a little bit more difficult because you do realise, after a while, you realise it actually it is doing quite well, mm. you know, but... I mean, you can't avoid it with something like that. No, it it did, yeah, yeah. But I I mean, it's also with Matilda, though, I I feel like, uh, I mean, I felt that the first time this happened was with with Pulling, where where I'd look at Pulling and I'd think, what I like about Pulling is that it's a collaboration. Like, before Pulling, I thought collaboration was bad. I thought it was something Nazis, you did with Nazis, (laughs) you know what I mean? I didn't think it was, like... (laughs) I didn't think it was like something, it was a good thing, you know. Yeah. I thought you had to sort of stamp your thing. But actually, when I looked at pulling, I thought that is better than, that. I couldn't do that. And I know you couldn't do oh, it. We couldn't, no, but only me and you together can yeah. do it. You know, we, yeah. when we come together, we can do it. Like on our own, we can't do it. I love that about it, you know. And I feel like that with Matilda. Like when I look at it, I know it's a collab, like it's me, Tim, it's Raul Dahl, obviously, but it's also Matthew, the director, and all the other guys in, involved in it. Are you still um, gobsmacked? by the fact that you're in this position where you've got, you know, you've won an, an Emmy and you've won a Tony and you've got an, an enormously successful musical and Utopia won loads of awards and the situation no, you're in... Awards. I just won one. Oh, shut up. <laughs> um, okay, it won a, um, a, Royal, a Television Society Award, no? It, oh, oh, no, that has... Yeah, yeah. no, the, the guy individually well as, has won yeah. awards, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's not all about you, Dennis. No, no. <laughs> Um, but do collaboration, you, ever, you see, collaboration, you ever, it's all about collaboration. Does it ever <laughs> feel like, you know, that's a bit nutty considering the boy that you were just talking about that earlier? That definitely seems, no, no, that really seems nutty. Mm. That, that, that often seems, and for a long time, uh, like, I, I would expect someone to give me a tap on the shoulder and go, oi, Mm. Back, back. You, you're supposed to be get back to the, Yeah, there's a there's a shelf that needs stacking. <laughs> what are you doing farting around here? You know, I did. That does feel weird. But I, I don't feel like I don't like I've said. I don't. You don't think too much about success and stuff because the moment you start thinking about that, you start 
feeling like you're losing it or something or, or, mm. or you know, and actually you, 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 it's to write, you have to, it takes a lot of will to write. It takes quite a bit of, um, you know, you've got to get, you, you don't have to get into a special space or anything like that. You've got to write every day and you've got to mm. do it. But actually you do need to give it attention. Mm -hmm. And if you swan off mentally in other places, you know, you can't really do that, you know. Mm. So uh, I, I think, and also you're sort of beset by the same ridiculous fears and de self-doubt and kind of, you know, crushing self-hatred that every other human being is. Oh, God, all of that, <laughs> all of that. What tips do you not want to tell aspiring writers so they won't surpass you and take your job stroke money? But, <laughs> but then I'll tell them. <laughs> I know, it's a silly question. Uh, uh, well, that, that was the biggest thing for me was like the compromise thing. Don't, don't, if you compromise, you know, and that, that's, that's, the, that's the thing, like... Also, I had a rule right at the beginning, which was never write for money. And that was a really good rule. And I've generally sort of stuck to that as well. I mean, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I like it when they give me money. And people have given me money. You know, people have given me a fair bit of money since then. <laughs> but don't write for the money. Like, no. my view is you've got to write what you believe in. And if they're going to give you money for it, that's great. But when you start writing for the money, what, what happens is you end up getting uh, caught up in the... You, you end up doing things you don't believe in. Yeah. So if some little aspiring writer in the audience held up his hand and said, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know what to, to do next. I mean, I've got this script and, yeah. and, and nobody wants to read it. Do you just go, just don't write for the money? Okay, it's just... this, I'm still trying to destroy them here, I know. This is, the, this is what I'm trying to okay. do. I'm trying to crush them. Yeah. No, I, I believe it. I, believe, I think, yeah, don't write for the money. I mean, that's, that's you know, I, I don't think it's necessarily good advice. Because, you know, it might go wrong. You know what I mean? But, but it, I, that's what I, I sort of felt. Like, I felt like my, my thing was I was going to throw all of it in. I was gambling the whole thing. And, and actually, if, if at the end of the day you don't get to be a writer, so what? You go off and be something else. It's not the be all and end all. There's a big, it's a big world, isn't it? But better to be a writer on your own terms than, than to be like, you know... Uh, 53 years old, still writing things you hate and kind of wishing someone would take you seriously. You know what I mean? I'd mm -hmm. rather fail gl it, it, meaning it than yeah. fail kind of uh, in a kind of whimpery way. Yeah, whimpery? Whimpery, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's, that is a, a good piece of advice. It's a terrible bit of advice. No, but it's good and terrible. Ways, yeah. in, in the but same again, time. trying to crush them, aren't we? Trying to destroy them. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so, um, Dennis, you you uh, you work very hard. I mean, you work seven days a week. Um, do you ever worry about running out of ideas, or does working that hard lubricate your brain? I don't worry too much about running out of ideas because I think the worry is more dangerous than th that happening. Yes. Like if you like, for, so, so for example, there's a thing called writer's block. You've yeah, heard what, of writer's block. I but guess. what is it? Well, exactly, it's bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I did, uh, I, I'm going to tell a story. Please. That, yeah, um, once upon a time. I was doing this thing for the birthday party by Harold Pinter, which is possibly the most important play of the last century. Changed everything, really, in theatre. Amazing play. And um, it was the 50th anniversary, and the lyric were doing it, and I was there on the panel talking with some people. And uh, afterwards, around, on the press, I went to the press night, and uh, David Farr was there, who had directed it. It was around the theatre, and I was talking to him. And I said, how's it going? And he was going, it's, it's interesting, but I've just, because Harold Pinter was there, like, you know, a year before he died. And he said, it's just strange. I, I went to um, talk to Harold about it, and uh, he just, like, I was talking to him, and I realised it was a bit odd. And I said, you know, are you OK? And he said, well, I'm just a bit nervous. And David Farr said, look, I understand why... I'm nervous, but this is the birthday party. You know, this is like a great play. Everyone loves this play. And Harold Pinter said, yeah, but what if they change their mind? You know, and it, for me, that was like, I, I sort of love that story because it makes me think if, if Harold Pinter at the age of 50 with possibly the greatest player of the 20th century still is scared that people are going to change their mind, I'm always going to feel like that. You know, there's never yeah. going to come a moment when I'm not scared, you know, about... Uh, not scared in a big way, but... So I think things like writer's block and, you know, fear of losing your ideas and all that sort of stuff, it, 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 you know, it's, it, they're all really natural, but the moment you sort of mythologise it or the moment you turn it into something else, you, you, you succumb to it. Um, so how have your family uh, reacted to all of this? All of because the... from what you've been talking about them it's quite a different um yeah quite a different situation well, that that they were in themselves well my dad died about 10 years ago so uh, he you know I, I was right in them but I wouldn't say nothing had 
been a, a little bit, a little bit. I'd had one or two things on, mm. you know. And I think at first they kind of thought, they were probably thinking like most sensible people would think, you know. Get a proper you're, job. Yeah, get, you know, yeah. you're, you're, you're like 32 now, for yeah. God's sake. When is this going <laughs> to, well, 34, 35, really, yeah. at the time it sort of, anything really happened. But, you know, <clears throat> I think they're, they're, they're pretty proud, actually, which is quite nice, you know. I mean, I, I, I've got two brothers, two sisters, there's five of us in the family, you know. And it does feel like, I think they're, I think they're sort of proud, you know. That it's a weird thing that because Did like, it take... you never thought, I never thought I'd make anyone. Proud. Oh, darling, ashamed. You make yes, me ashamed. proud all the time, all the time. Oh, that's very sweet. But um, did did it take Matilda to sort of do that? Or well, I think being on te- pulling, being on telly, oh, even was, though you weren't in moment. it, they still yeah. Because before are... then, all I'd done was plays, and like yeah. people don't really know, you know, yeah, they didn't really know what was going on with that whole no. play thing. But then that's on TV, and then yeah. Matilda sort of did quite well. I, the one of the I got the, that that was like my mum came to see it, and you know that was a moment when it felt like yeah, uh, you know, and and it was really weird because my mum's got dodgy legs and the. Uh, the uh, the um, we were waiting for everyone to go, you know, and they loved it. And then this usher came up and started chatting with her, and he didn't know who I was, and he'd been he's, he was really sweet. And he, in, at the end of it, he just said, I- "I've been here fifteen years. That's the best thing that's been on." No, and it, I felt like I felt like I should have oh. paid him, you know. Oh. Like I really like <laughs> I, I really felt it was a sweet, it, and oh. like I could just see for her she, it just kind of like she was glowing a bit, you oh, know. That's beautiful. But it was really sweet. Yeah, yeah. Although I feel a bit. Uh, icky telling that story because don't I'm feel icky. There, you know. This is perfect. This is a safe room. <laughs> you the can... scumbags are here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, we are actually going to finish it there, but thank you, Dennis, for talking to me. I thought thank that was, you. I really enjoyed nice. it, and yeah. I haven't seen you for a while, so it was good to catch up. And um, thanks for being a lovely audience. <laughs> That was Chain Reaction with Sharon Horgan and her guest, Dennis Kelly. The producer was Arnav Chandra. 